to the member game and welcome to God of War 1 Road to Ragnarok. Time is running out. It was time to finally give you God of War. You know, like the difficulty in the last game? Let's look if God of War 1 2005 is worth playing before God of War Ragnarok in November. Before we continue with the basic origin of Kratos, we need to talk a bit about the gameplay and graphics. <laughs> So let's look at the graphics out of the way. I would say 2005 did have some games with better graphics like Resident Evil 4 and maybe Hulk of all things, but one had shell shading and the other is known as one of the best games of all time. You could be the judge of which one's which though. Do you want to know what it is? You take the blue pill. You take the red pill. Back in 2005, God of War's graphics was the entry standard, like Star Wars Battlefield 2 and Prince of Persia 2. All had these similar styles to them. So if you can get through near any 2005 game with no problem, God of War won't be a problem. And it's still got better graphics than Pokemon Icarus. Before we continue this rage-filled adventure of Kratos through 2005's God of War, please give this video a like and subscribe for more mumbles. You never know what mumble you're gonna get. Back to the video. Then we go to the gameplay. What is a classic hack and slash like Prince of Persia Evil Within and Devil May Cry. Both Prince of Persia Evil Within and God of War released a year apart with both being a hack and slash and both having twin swords. I would call shenanigans on that one. Dude, these dolls are cheap ripoffs. Through the game, you collect red orbs, what I think simulates souls to upgrade your blades and gain new combo. This ain't like Dark Souls though, so don't get that worried. Through the game, you gain abilities given to you by the gods, and also a couple more weapons to upgrade down the line. That's your basic combat hack and slash with a little added magic. There is another ability called Spartan Rage. Let the rage of the gods drive your blades, crazy. Where you get a lot of extra power to take down your enemies. It was kind of the injury standard then when you had that power bar when it got to full you became kind of invincible and had that extra power boost you also get a lot of complex puzzles that are all pushing and pushing and even more pushing Also, there are some climbing elements to the puzzles as well. Some really old school stuff. When we're looking at the graphics and gameplay, the graphics may push some people away, but if you can easily push through that, I think you have a very interesting game. What's well, it? Definitely worth playing. The gameplay is sort of a Addictive for that time with you collecting orbs and then upgrading your different weapons and magic steadily through the game. It's also kind of a choice we can act to it because I don't think you can really choose everything throughout the game to upgrade, making it really interested on how you play through the game. But always upgrade your Chaos Blades to full. That's my tip. It makes the gameplay very enjoyable, clunky at times, but it's a game that released in 2005. To make it worth playing before the lead up for God of War Ragnarok, the precious, the chosen one, the future game of the year, you need some story elements that are connected to the future games. It's finally time for the main event. The story. Kratos is very down on his luck and something I must have blocked out of my mind as God of War does a two weeks earlier segment, making it feel like this. Fade to black. Title. Three weeks earlier. We get into the game with Kratos being called upon by the gods to take down a Hydra. What is tease when you have a kind of first boss fight against one of the heads of the Hydra. Then you fight some demons, speak to some gods, and then after that, and ask the gods to stop the memories haunting him. After being a servant for the gods for 10 years. Through this, we meet two gods, Athena, who is kind of our guide, and Poseidon, who really gives his electric powers, and I can't see Zeus being happy with someone stealing his thunderbolts. Namely, the next god Kratos kills is gonna be Poseidon. But wait until Aphrodite gives us his powers. This is where the true adventure begins, with Ares being a bit of a dick and the gods want him dead. And there's only one man for the job, Kratos. The game serves as a kind of origin story for Kratos, however it does skip the 10 years of Kratos' service to the gods. All this is basically an intro as the game doesn't really start until we reach Athens. 
we get to see what our hero is like and how big the end boss could be down the line. Through Athens, you fight a massive amount of different enemies. Ares is attacking Athens and that's why Kratos is here to save the day. Through this whole area, there isn't that much involved in story. There's a lot of fun killing and stuff. But the main reason for this was to find the Oracle to open the oracle door. It does feel very fetch questy through this area. It kind of feels like an episode of Dora the Explorer. Well, I know how to get to the big red hill. To get to the big red hill, you need to go here to find the oracle to open the oracle door. Then we go to Pandora's box to fight Ares and then literally hell and back again to kill this Ares guy. Throughout the journey you learn more and more about Kratos through little cutscenes and his memories while haunting him. We learn that Kratos is a successful war general before his service to the gods and we learn that Kratos had a wife and daughter. It doesn't cover all 10 years but it does explain how we ended up here in the current God of War 2005 game. You also find more about how Kratos got the Blades of Chaos and the reason why Kratos wants to kill Ares. It feels really like a basic origin story. By looking at this game compared to the future games in the series, Zeus is currently teased to be the future big bad but isn't really touched upon. There is a big twist at the end of the game though that I won't spoil if you plan on playing this one. Zeus is still talked about in the current game with God of War 2018 having a massive segment with Zeus in it. Ares is a complete afterthought. Athena is still there, the Blades of Chaos is still there, but Ares is just nowhere to be seen in the current running series. There's also some story elements what start off from this game, what are still tied in the current games. If you're looking to know every little element of the game's lore, I would say, yeah, this is definitely worth playing. If you can go into the next game with near no clue how Kratos got the mantle of God of War and it's really deep lore around the Pandora's box, skip this one. But there's still a lot to learn about the little god of war in this game and the chaos filled world around him. In summary, God of War Uno 2005 is a very good game, but when playing, you have to remember a couple of things. There's no autosave, but there are a good amount of save points. The gameplay is kind of like a reading a book, but it does lead to a lot of fetch quests. There are some other weird bits like you meet Zeus to get the get power and with hindsight should have been a bigger moment. There are some really hard areas like the wheelie dealie Deathbringer. The story is definitely worth that six to eight hours as it sets the foundation, the future of the whole game franchise and could even still connect to Ragnarok in November. And that's it for this moment. We should be going down another road soon and seeing if that road is worth going down to Ragnarok. For this mumble has ended, we will see you on the next mumble. Please like and subscribe and goodbye.